How's it going? David and Colin from Investments. So 2023 was a pretty, not very good year for comic books. Now 2022, we saw a way more dropping in price, you know, by 30, 40, 50%. And then 2023 just kind of added on to that. Not dropping as much, more of like 10 to 20, 30%. Not as bad, but still just adding on over and over and over. Some comic books started to stabilize and kind of this were flat for most of the year. So now what does 2024 look like for comic book investing? So I compiled a list of the comic books that I think you should be investing in 2024. Now they're not certain individual comics per se. There are some, but a lot of them is more like a category of a comic book or a character that you should be aiming towards. Now, many times you'll see these lists from other YouTubers, including myself sometimes, that will put books that are more spec books, speculation books, and those are the types that is like, you're hoping this character hits and it jumps up really quick and then this goes right back down. I'm not gonna put that on here. That is way too short term, way too risky. Yeah, you can make a lot of money if you flip it real quick, but this is more long term. So this is stuff that I'm saying by now, three, five, ten years out. These will be books that will be going up in value over the long term. Now, first up at number 10, we got Golden Age Good Girl Comics. Now, this one in particular is a Phantom Lady number 17. In 2013, a 3-0 sold for 1,374. And then in 2018, five years later, that same 3-0 sold for 4,050. And then now it has averaged throughout the year for 3-0, 16,800. That is a five-year return of 315%, a 10-year return of 1,123%. Now, if you compare that to other investments, such as the Dow Jones, in that same 10-year span, it went up 127%, S&P 500 went up 161%, Amazon stock went up 671, and Apple went up 868, and then real estate was up about 58%. If you want some other examples of good girl comic books that are highly desired, there's Giant Comics Editions number 12. That is a Matt Baker art. That is up 877% and a 5.0 averages about 26,400 for the year of 2023. Or you can go with Brenda Star number 14. A 5.5 averages about 5,700. It's up 202% in 10 years. Or a Spirit number 22. An 8.0 runs you about 14,400, and that is up 217% in 10 years. Now, most of these good girl covers, they don't really have like a first appearance or an origin or some key character or something like that tied to it. It's more about the cover and the artist who drew that cover. Matt Baker is just a, a huge, huge win uh, in that front, but these are highly, highly desired by collectors. And these are the type of comic books that you get into them. Yeah, they might not be the flashiest, they might not go sky high, right? But you can guarantee for years and years to come, they're always gonna have a collector base, although small of a collector base. The thing is with these, there's not that many out there. They're kind of hard to find. Some of them maybe only come up a couple times a year. So there's just not a lot of quantity out there, not a lot of supply. But there's a strong enough collector base that they're willing to pay a high, high, high price for them. At number nine, we got original art. Todd McFarlane, a Hulk 330, in 2018, this cover sold for about 33,600. And in 2023, that same cover sold for 63,000. That is up 89%. Some other examples that you can go for is Jack Kirby, fantastic artist, highly desired, or even a Jim Lee. Now with art, it's kind of hard to do, but if you do it right, you can make a lot of money in their great investments. Some pieces sell for over $3 million, not even covers. And then there's other covers that can sell for the high hundreds, even millions of dollars. But with art, first of all, it comes down to the artist. That is the most important. Just because it's Spider-Man depends on the artist, that's gonna be way different on how expensive it goes for. Another key thing you have to look for is if you get a particular artist and they're known for drawing some particular character, and that's what people really attach themselves to. Todd McFarlane, Spider-Man. You know, a Todd McFarlane spawn. Those will do a lot better than say a Todd McFarlane drawing beast. Also, it's best to go for artists that are more legendary as opposed to just kind of new or kind of not that popular. If you go for an artist that's new, 
there's a lot of risk there. Maybe they pop off and they become popular five or 10 years down the line and their art becomes very expensive. Or maybe they just fade away and become nothing. And if you go for an artist that's kind of older and doesn't really do art anymore, but you're buying some older pieces, don't expect to have, to have huge gains either because they've kind of already had their time to see if they become a super popular artist and then they just kind of sit around a certain price point. Next at number eight is Joker Covers. This is a Batman number 11. In 2013, a 3.5 sold for $1,160. In 2018, that same 3.5 sold for $4,122. And in 2023, that same 3.5 was averaging about $6,150. That is up for five years, 49%, and a 10 year return of 430%. Some other examples is a Batman 23. A 7.0 is about $5,950, and that is up 358%. Batman 251, a 9.4 averages about $2,500 and that is up in 10 years, 426%. And then a Detective Comics 69, a 4.0 runs you about $9,300 and that is a 10 year return of 761%. So people love the Joker, especially those old golden age covers that you can get. Those are very, very key. And then there's also a few in the bronze and silver age that are very good covers themselves. But if you get your hands on some Golden Age Joker covers, those will always be desired. Joker is a very, very, very popular character and people love those covers. So any cover you can get, especially in the Golden Age, even if it's a low grade, I might put some higher grades on here, but these are just examples. You can get lower grades too and they'll do just as fine. And when comparing them to the other like investments like stocks, real estate, stuff like that, those are just to show you basic RI, return on your investment. I know stocks and comics and real estate is all different. There's a bunch of other different factors, but I'm just showing you to see how they compare to other things. Next to number seven, we got Deadpool, the character. This is a new Mutants 98. This is his first appearance in 2013, a 9.8 averaged about $360. Five years later in 2018, it was 780. And then 2023 averaged around $1,400. That is a five-year return of 117%, a 10-year return of 289%. Some other examples that you can go for is Deadpool number one, a 9.8, runs you about $215, that is up 20%. X-Force number two, which is the second appearance of Deadpool, a 9.8 is runs you about $83, that is up 80% in 10 years. Now, I don't need to tell you how popular Deadpool is. And he has a new movie coming out probably sometime this year, maybe it gets pushed back and year after who knows but it's going to be a huge huge movie and deadpool just gets more and more popular he just he has that it factor and getting into certain comic book keys of his will be very beneficial long term i don't think deadpool is going anywhere i don't need to tell you so if you can get yourself a new mutants 98 now i know i put a 9.8 on there but hey you don't need to get a 9.8 that's just one example you can get a 9.6 it will be totally fine and not to get a 9.8 for a new mutants number 98. Now the other ones like Deadpool 1 and the X-Force, you probably need a 98 for that one. Next to number six, one of my favorite categories is pre-code horror. Crime suspense stories number 22. In 2013, a 3 sold for $700. Five years later in 2018, it was selling for 1375. And now a 3 averages around $4,550. That is a five-year return of 231% and a 10-year return of 550%. Some other good examples is Chamber of Chills number 23. A 4.5 is going to run you about $5,430, but it is up. The biggest return on this list, 4,663%. Mr. Mystery number 12 is going to run you, a 4.5 is going to run you about $6,356. That's up $683. And then you got Black Cat Mystery, number 50. A 4.5 is gonna run you about $14,401. It has a 10-year return of $1,507. Now, I love this category. I love pre-code horror. Highly desired, but again, there's not that many of them. And they do have a group of collectors that really love them and they'll pay through the nose to get them. Now, there's many other pre-code horror. There's tons and tons out there, not just these. There's ones that are vastly cheaper than the ones I've shown you that are still highly desired. These are just some examples. There's many lists out there. I've done lists myself on what pre-code horror get, but these are just some examples. But pre-code means before the Commerce Code Authority, 
which they did a whole video on it. Happened around you know 1955. They put the coat on it, kind of destroyed the horror stuff. But if you can get yourself prior to that some key covers now these are all based off covers not first appearances usually not at all or origins things like that all covers by different artists those are the ones you want to go for there's lots of them out there to choose from but i think pre-code is a very very good investable category next is number five is we got wolverine yes many people probably think you should be higher on this list Incredible Hulk number 181, first full appearance of Wolverine in 2013. The 98 was selling for about a little over 10,000. 2018, selling for 30,000. And then in 2023, it averaged throughout the year 68,000. That is a five year return of 198%, a 10 year return of 575%. Some other examples of some good books to get for Wolverine collectors is Incredible Hulk 180. That is his first cameo appearance. A 9.8 is going to average about 23,700. That is a 10 year return of 829%. Giant size X Men number one and a 9.8 averaged around 29,300. That is a 10 year return of 369%. And Wolverine one limited, a 9.8 is $800 and had a 300% return. Now, if you watch the show long enough, you know that I'm all about getting Hulk 181. I think that is a great, great book for multiple reasons. I don't, it's, I think long-term, fantastic book, but it's also in that price point where it's somewhat reasonable for collectors and investors to get into. You can get you know, a lower grade all the way down to like a 2.0 and it'd be totally fine, or you can go as high as a 9.8. And it's still relatively within reason compared to if I was like, oh, go get a Fantasy 15 or Action Number 1. It's like, okay, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars for an Action 1 just for the lowest grade. And for a fantasy 15, you're spending tens of thousands of dollars. So still relatively within reach. And I think it's a fantastic book. Wolverine is probably one of the most popular characters in comics. Next at number four is we got Captain America comics, specifically the golden age Captain America. Captain America comics number one in 2013, a 7.0 sold for 94,000 in 2018. That same one sold for 228,000 and then 2023, it sold for $300,150. That is a five-year return of 32% and a 10-year return of 219. Some other examples that you should be aiming for is Red Skull covers in Captain America, especially that number 74. Great, great cover. Or you can go for war covers. Those are highly, highly desired as well. Anything with war covers on it, you know, World War II, anything. These have had a long-standing of non-stop gains over time and people love captain america comics because there's just not a lot of them out there and there's a lot of collectors willing to pay a lot for them now these might not have the best percentages of going up but again that's not everything about investing you also don't want it to go down either so as long as it goes up a little bit and doesn't really go down more safe is also good and these are definitely very very safe and definitely very very long term they're not going anywhere although they might not have the sexiest roi but they'll be the safest and that's good next in number three is we got golden age detective comics this is a uh, detective 31 in 2013 a two sold for a little over 19,000. In 2018, averaged around 27,000. And in 2023, for a 2.0, you're looking at about $93,000. That is a five year return of 244% and a 10 year return of 386%. Some other great examples will be a Detective Comics 73, this first Scarecrow cover. A 3.0 is going to run you around 6,100 and that a 10 year return of 515%. Also, anything pre Robin as issue Detective 27 up to 37 those are fantastic to good so yeah golden age detective comics really really well do very very well especially pre-robin fantastic obviously and then there's obviously key books you know obviously detective like 54 first penguin and you know i mentioned the first scarecrow cover 73 there's also you know two-faced stuff like that any of those keys are great to have great long-term investments they're not really going anywhere and in terms of like down they're going to just be steady going up for years and years to come. At number two, Marvel Silver Age Keys. This example is a Fantastic Four number one in 2013, a four five sold on average for 4,350. In 2018, it averaged 12,550. And in 2023, it averaged 19,900. That has a five year return of 59% and a 10 year return of 357%. 
Another example will be in Krub Hulk number one, a 6 0 averaged 39,500. That had a 10 year return of 413%. This is the first appearance of Hulk. You can also get other ones such as Amazing Spider Man number one, Daredevil number one, Journey of Mystery 83, Tales of Suspense, you know, 39, X Men number one, all. All those books, you know, first Ant-Man, any like anything like that, those are great, great books. You know the top Silver Age keys by now if you've been watching this channel long enough. Those are great. Now we did see a dip. We did see a big dip in 2022 and this, you know, in 2023, but they started going up towards the end. I've made videos on it before. I think this is the bottom, but these have the best growth factor because yeah, maybe they have dipped quite a bit, but they're just gonna go right back up. If any books are gonna go up, it will be these books that are gonna go up. So I don't imagine these getting really any lower and come back, you know, the end of 2024, they're gonna be a lot higher than they are currently. And when anyone talks about blue chip comics, this is usually the books that they are talking about. The Silver Age Marvel Keys. And last at the list at number one is Spider-Man. Yes, he is the top investable character. You can get his first appearance in Amazing Fantasy 15. In 2013, a 6-0 averaged around almost 18,000. In 2018, a 6-0 was selling for about 53,250. And then in 2023, a 6-0 averaged 72,000. That had a five-year return of 35% and a 10-year return of 301%. Other good investable ones in his series is Spider-Man 1, second appearance of Spider-Man. 6-0 is going to run you about 19,500. That had a 10-year return of 179%. Amazing Spider-Man 129, first appearance of the Punisher. 9-4 is going to run you about 5,100. And that had a 10-year return of 325%. And then pretty much any Silver Age Spider-Man books, key or non-key, they're fantastic to get. Or you could even go for Spider-Man 300, and 9-8 is going to run you about 3,600 and had a 10 year turn of 365%. Spider-Man is probably the number one comic character. I'm sorry, it is this kind of is. He is super popular, more popular than Batman and Superman. Not by much, but yes, I think so. He's highly, highly desired. A lot of people love collecting him. You can pretty much get the best run that you can get if you had to get a whole run would be the Amazing Spider-Man run compared to any other run. Yeah, I know you got action number one is gonna be vastly more expensive, but it's just the desirability, the investability of it all, like, you know, pretty much one all the way up. They're always desired. Get the Silver Age stuff. That's gonna be your best bet. Um, anything Silver Age, it doesn't even have to be a key. It can just be a random issue. Just a random issue that's Silver Age, great book. You know, you can get them even lower grades in like four O's and six O's and things like that. But Spider-Man is the best investable character he will probably always especially in fancy 15 if you can afford it is a great investment i always recommend that book if someone asked me you know top five investable comic books of all time like what should i get fancy 15 would probably be you know close to number one if not number one always that is it that is my list for the top 10 investable comic books or comic book categories however you want to look at for 2024 i hope you guys have a good year